number 666, Seek the Lord. We're going to do the refrain and verses from A. graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the people, Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. 
The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there, and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. Your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord to the Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, do not, uh, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with all his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give them will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying you do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What have you, what you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you people say that the place of worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus did, said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still, no one said, what are you looking for? Why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to him, I have food to eat which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one that sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see. The fields are ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, 
so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing in the fruits of their living. Many of the Samaritans of the town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, who told me everything I had done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this truly is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, last week I had asked you, um, how's your Lent going? It's about a week and a half or so into the Lenten season. And uh, this week I'm not going to ask you the same thing, but uh, as we are celebrating the third Sunday of Lent, uh, we I don't know about any of you, but I do know for myself that usually uh, either A, when I'm trying to do something new, or B, uh, in the Lenten season, that sometimes... Sometimes when you start to get into the third week or fourth week of Lent, things tend to get a tinge harder. Sort of like, yeah, I'm good for the first couple weeks, but then it just seems as when you're trying to grow, grow closer to the Lord through prayer, through fasting, through almsgiving, that sometimes the devil is going to knock a little bit harder on the door of your heart or your soul, and uh, temptation may seem a little bit louder than it did before. But understand that that is normal. Understand that that happens because it is that when we grow closer to the Lord that sometimes I mean, Well, when we are growing closer to the Lord all the time We are doing something that the devil doesn't want us to do And so he is going to try harder to trip us up and so if our temptations are uh, Knocking on the door of our hearts and souls just a little bit louder. Like I said, don't be surprised be prepared But not surprised but speaking of uh, the, our hearts and uh, getting to the heart of the matter, uh, today, as we have heard the story about the woman and the well from the Gospel of John, what does it tell, tell us? Well, in many ways, it kind of speaks to, it speaks to the heart of three things in our life, in our prayer, and in the church. It speaks to the heart of the Christ's mission. It speaks to the heart of God's desire for us in terms of his relationship with us, and also it speaks to the heart of what we are called to do in our response back to God. So, at the heart of the mission of the Lord, what is that? Well, in many ways it is on full display here as we hear, again, the story of the woman at the well. First, I would say this, that one of the things that we did not hear today is the is the. Uh, the, the verse of God, John's Gospel that comes right before where this passage started that we just heard. And in that simple but small line, it says that Jesus had to pass through Samaria. Now you might think, well, what, who cares? Like, why is that important? Well, in many ways, one, we have to understand that uh, Samaritans and Jews, uh, if you're familiar with scripture, you know that they do not get along. Again, their relationship is antagonistic at best. And the re one of the reasons why this is so is that if you look at the book, uh, second book of Kings, chapters 15 through 17, you get an understanding that this the Samaritans come from remnants of the ten tribes of Israel that were taken off into exile by the Assyrians around 722 BC. Now some of the remnants of the, those tribes have been taken away. There were still some people there, and the people that remained intermarried with the Assyrians. In some ways they 
uh, started to take up some of their practices, and also they set up their own temple in at Mount Gerizim. They worship the same God as you and me, as our Jewish brothers and sisters, but in their own way with their own priesthood. So it's similar, but not the same. And so they're antagonistic towards others, each other, and um, they did not want to interact. Yet the Samaritans were still awaiting a Messiah. And so when it says so that Jesus had to go through, some, the, uh, through Samaria, the truth is that he didn't have to do that. When Jews went through that area trying to get from Galilee to Jerusalem, the truth is that they didn't have to go through Samaria. They could go around. And so the very fact that the Lord is going through Samaria tells us that he's seeking out those who are lost, those who are scattered and lost by the, the exile that happened with the Assyrians and going to the very heart of that. And also with his direct encounter with the woman at the well, it also shows that he's going to seek those who are lost, not only as a tribe, if you will, of Israel, or in that relationship, but also personally. Because we see this woman coming to the well at the midday hour, which nobody would ever do that because it's the heat of the day. And typically when people, especially when women went to the well, they would go in groups, and she's all alone. Much of the context tells us, and even when Jesus inquires about her relationship status, that she may be a pariah in her own town. She may be persona non grata. She could be a lot of things. So, um, but yet the Lord Jesus is willing to encounter her, talk with her, and speak to her. Through, whether it be going through Samaria, or talking to uh, the woman at the well, this tells us again that at the heart of the mission of Christ, that he has come to seek out those who are lost. And not only those who are lost, but any part in any of us individually that might feel lost, that we might have a concern, a sin that we're struggling with, something that maybe just doesn't make sense in our life, whatever it is, the Lord is coming to seek out that which is lost, and how good news that is to us. But also then, this encounter that Jesus has with the woman at the well also, in many ways, expresses God's desire for us. And what do I mean by that? Well, the type of relationship that God desires for you and for me mirrors that of a wedding. The intimacy between husband and wife that is the same intimacy that God desires between uh, us and him. And we see that expressed, for example, with the very fact that Jesus and this woman from this town are at a well. And why would we get an image of marriage from there? Well, especially for our Jewish brothers and sisters, they would understand that this is an image of marriage because there are many uh, folks that, um, whose relationship uh, resulted in marriage and a well happened to be part of their story. For example, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel, Moses and Zipporah, Jack and Jill. <laughs> All these stories involve a man, a woman, and a well. And from that flows marriage. So the very fact that Jesus is having this conversation with the woman at the well, that's why these disciples are so uh, perplexed by the situation. Um, it's not just simply they're having a conversation, but the imagery of, again, the man, the woman, and the well together shows a sense, is a, is a marriage image in Scripture. And so on one level, this again points to how the Lord God literally in many ways desires to marry us, desires to marry us. We even see this through the very fact that uh, Jesus speaks to uh, the woman at the well about living water, about living water. 
Because certainly we know that Jesus gives living water from the blood and the water that is shed from his side on the cross. But also, if we look in Scripture in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 19, there is a prescription there, if you will, of when there would be a wedding, a bride in particular would go through a very uh, a specific ceremonial washing that would be referred to as living water before she got married to her husband. And so again, that marital image, when we talk about living water of union, of husband and wife, how we as a church are the bride of Christ. So this union of being married. And then also we think about what makes us children of God, the sacrament of baptism. So we see how that is layered in a multitude of different ways in that desire for God to be and us to be one. God desires complete union with you and me. And so we have a God that loves us so much that he says, seek us out even when we might be lost so that we may grow into a new union with him. And so therefore, if those are at the heart of what uh, God is doing, and the catechism even further affirms this by saying that the entire Christian life bears the mark of the spousal love of Christ and the church. Again, the entire Christian life bears the mark of the spousal love of Christ and the church. And so if that be the case, then what is our call? What's at the heart of our mission? And in many ways, the heart of our mission is to respond very much like the woman at the well. In a certain sense, to respond or to seek Christ like a bride. In the story here, we have this woman at the well that even just as she starts to maybe understand who Jesus is, she points out and says, I can see you're a prophet, mighty in word and deed. And at that, that is an invitation for Jesus to dig deeper into her life as the Lord desires to go deeper into our lives. So even that little bit of faith, we are called to rejoice in that and grow closer to the Lord, to seek, that, seek the Lord with the energy of a bride. Because if you think about a bride, especially in, in today's world, pre preparing for marriage, all the dress fittings, magazines, uh, things to do, the excitement, that is the same thing that we are called to draw in to our relationship with the Lord, into our prayer, into our fasting, into our almsgiving. It's everything that helped the woman at the well see who Jesus is, to go out and to share the good news, and to bring others to Christ. It helped her to be prepared to receive the Lord. And the same thing is true for us, that we are called to prepare ourselves to receive the Lord in the same way. To seek the Lord like a bride. Because it is, again, when we continue to welcome the Lord in a deeper way into our life, that we grow into a deeper union with the Lord, that one life, that one life together that we see lived out in the sacrament of marriage. And it also is that the one at the well, she represents us all. She represents us all, and not only because all of us in some way can falter and have issues and struggles in our own life. But again, go back to what a Samaritan is, half Jewish and half, in this case, the Assyrians, so half pagan. Jesus came and died to set us all free. She represents the entire world, like St. Augustine would say, of both the Jews and the Gentiles to come. So my brothers and sisters, the good news to us, again, is that we celebrate, proclaim to us today the heart and the mission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to seek out those parts of us that are lost, to remind us of the union he desires with us, and the hope that it gives us to seek him out with the energy of a bride seeking out her groom. And in what joy and what new life that gives to us. May we embrace that this week as we continue our Lenten journey in our prayer, our fasting, and almsgiving, leading us closer to Christ in our relationship with him.
Please stand. Don Hine. Robert Williams. And R. E. Lewis. Elect of God, I now invite you to bow your heads in prayer. Let us pray for these elect whom the church has confidently chosen. May they successfully complete their long preparation and at the Paschal Feast find Christ in his sacraments. That they may ponder the word of God in their hearts and savor its meaning more fully day by day, we pray to the Lord. That they may learn to know Christ who came to save what was lost, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may humbly confess themselves to be sinners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may sincerely reject everything in their lives that is displeasing and contrary to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, who searches every heart, may help them to overcome their weakness through his power, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the same Holy Spirit may teach them to know the things of God and how to please Him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That their families also may put their hope in Christ and find peace and holiness in Him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we ourselves, in preparation for the Easter feast, may seek a change of heart, give ourselves to prayer, and persevere persevere in our good works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Throughout, that throughout the whole world, whatever is weak may be strengthened, whatever is broken, restored, whatever is lost, found, and whatever is redeemed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, that we seek Christ and his living water in the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local, national, and world leaders, that they make wise and prudent decisions for the good of the community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechumens, candidates, and elect, that they be strengthened in their desire for unity with the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Harrison Brown, who will be baptized, and for his parents and godparents as they support him on his faith journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather around this Eucharistic table, that their hearts be open to God's voice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that we may intercede for one another as we mention our many needs and intentions in the silence of our hearts. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that have died in Christ, especially Matthew Gallo, who we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of power, you sent your Son to be our Savior, grant that these catechumens, who, like the woman at Samaria, thirst for living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word and acknowledge the sins and weaknesses that weigh them down. Protect them from vain reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit, so that admitting the wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, in your merciful wisdom, you touched the heart of the sinful woman and taught her to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
Now by your power, free these elect from the cunning of Satan as they draw near to the fountain of living water. Touch our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit, that they may come to know the Father in true faith, which expresses itself in love, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support to our prayers for you, and we look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. Our second collection is for the Eastern Europe collection. We're going to sing, Lord, I am not worthy. There's an insert in your missile act. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, 
Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her a fire of divine love. And so we do give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, there entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. salvation, giving thanks you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And and with your spirit. Spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ. Number 664, Loving and Forgiving. Yeah. 
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about us in, uh, in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we have, a, as I've said before, it is the season of many announcements. So uh, just a few reminders for this upcoming week, especially uh, that, uh, that tomorrow, or on Monday, I was going to say tomorrow, it's not tomorrow yet, uh, but on Monday, uh, the 6 p.m. Mass in Lodi will actually be at 6.30 in Seville. Um, it is the closing Mass for the Youth Faith Formation Program for this year. Um, also, there are two sessions left for the, uh, our parish's pastoral planning listening sessions. There's one tomorrow, March 12th at noon in Nova, and then also Wednesday, March 15th at 6.30 uh, p.m. here in Litchfield. Also, a reminder that this Friday, Nine Nights of Night Prayer uh, begins. It's every night, Friday the 17th through Saturday the 25th at 8 o'clock p.m. in Lodi. Night prayer takes roughly about 10 minutes or so, one of the Liturgy of the Hours, and on the last night, there's also an ice cream treat afterwards. So. Um, also, uh, we're encouraging everyone to please RSVP for the Holy Thursday dinner which is at 6.30 p.m. on Holy Thursday, with Mass to follow at 7.30. Uh, those RSVP forms can be found in the lobby of each gathering site, uh, or the gathering area of every site. Also on our parish website, you can register online, and on the form there's also a QR code. And then last but not least, um, uh, we ask everyone to please assist us with Holy Thursday and also the soup and bread dinner. There's a multitude of different ways to sign up to help uh, with cleanup or with setup. Um, and those uh, sign up sheets are also in the gathering area at every site. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that, abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, the Prince of Battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the souls. Amen. Number 131, Save Your People. <laughs> 